look at me Hi guys, welcome back to this vlog. You've probably uh, seen a few clips already. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, it's been six months since my last video because I sort of promised myself that I wouldn't upload anything until I was done with my third master's. And I'm done. <laughs> my final result came in. I did really well. I'm very happy and I'm done. So now I can film again. And I posted a story on Instagram asking you guys if you wanted a vlog or a book discussion about translated literature. And the majority wanted a vlog. So here I am. I'm afraid it's going to be very boring <laughs> because the weather is just really bad it's raining a lot so we're home i was feeling a little bit under the weather uh with a cold or something i had a headache so it is five o'clock in the afternoon on a saturday and i'm about to start reading so yeah that happens so i'm going to show you the books that i want to read from i don't think i'm going to finish one of them the other one i'm not obviously because i still have a long way to go but i don't know i'm in a funky mood i don't know what i feel like reading honestly uh so we'll see but i am going to finish the vanishing act of esme lennox by maggie o'farrell and this is about a girl in the 1930s uh, who had like a very peculiar behavior for a, girl, for a girl at that time. So her family sent her to a mental asylum because, you know, you do that. And <laughs> they just left her there for years. And now uh, her sister's granddaughter is the only one available to pick her up because the mental asylum is like closing its doors so they are asking relatives to go and pick up you know their family members <laughs> but this girl Iris didn't know her grandmother had a sister and she didn't know the sister was in a mental asylum for years and years so this book like there's no there's no plot, like nothing really happens. We are trying to understand why Esme's family felt the need to send her there in the first place. We learn a little bit about the family as a whole through Iris. Um, and that's pretty much it. We're just trying to figure out, you know, people's nature, relationships. I like these sort of books. Like you don't have a plot as such. This is entirely character driven. Uh, it is incredibly sad to think that this happened to people, and it did. You know, for so many years, women were sent to institutions. Uh, I'm saying women because the majority were women, but obviously men as well. And they were just left there. So it's kind of sad. Um, it is written in a very peculiar way. Uh, we have, we jump. Uh, around in terms of time so we go back to the 1930s we come back to the present time and we learn a little bit about Esme growing up and basically I'm I'm supposed to finish this book and I still don't know exactly what happened as you can see I don't have a lot to read but you know every little detail counts we learn a little bit about her sister Kitty uh, right now she's not completely sane. Her speech kind of travels also in terms of time but also events like she gets some events confused and we know a little bit about Iris. Actually Iris was very prominent in the beginning and now she's not as much but 
I don't I don't mind it. Like Iris was not a character that I really wanted to get to know better. I really want to know what happened to Esme rather, but still, uh, it's something that just it it might seem weird if you're reading the book. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I started this book. This is one of the books that I started between September and December and I didn't finish. I have a lot of books that I didn't finish because I had to focus on my master's, I had to focus on my action research project, I had to focus on writing my thesis. And so a lot of these books, <laughs> I started them months ago and I'm only picking them up again now. Uh, fortunately, I was really aware of this book. Like I knew uh, where I left off, I knew exactly what was happening, so it was not a problem coming back to this. Uh, this is the one that I'm going to focus on today, Saturday, so I can finish this. And then, depending on my mood, I might just read another section of Dracul. So this is a weird book to explain. I don't know if I did already on Instagram. It's just, it's very weird. This is about Bram Stoker, but it's a fictionalized account of his life. And it's like how he came across Dracul, the original Dracula, and then years later he wrote Dracula. It's just very confusing. So just going to this thinking these are characters, this is not Bram Stoker the person, this is Bram Stoker the character. It's better. Uh, the first section, so I got this for Christmas by the way, and I started reading it almost right away. The first section was kind of slow. And I heard a lot of people saying that, oh, I tried reading this book, but it's, it was just really slow, so I DNF'd it. Yeah, the first section is a bit slow, also because Bram Stoker is a child, his siblings are children as well, and they're sort of, you know, playing detective. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of children as characters, uh, because it's really hard to write characters. Uh, sorry. <laughs> It's really hard to write children. Uh, their speech sometimes is just not natural. This is not how a child is supposed to speak. This is not what a child is supposed to do. But you just go with it because this, this section is not that long. It's 100 pages, give, and, give or take. Yeah, it's 100 pages. You know, just power through it and then you'll get to the good stuff because the second part is action-packed and I, I love it. They're grown up now so it's just a lot easier to follow the plot. Uh, now it's getting interesting. The, the first part was interesting because it is the beginning, it is when they realize that something is going on, but again, I don't, didn't like the way, I didn't like the way they wrote these characters as children. I think it's just so difficult to do. And sometimes that's like enough for me to just put it down. But I didn't, and I'm happy that I didn't. So I would like to read another section of it. I have like this much uh, that I wanted to read. It's not a lot, but it's enough for me to hit uh, 100 pages away from the second part, which was my, which is my goal right now. We'll see if I'm in the mood to read these pages today or not. Uh, if not, I'll let you know which book I pick up next because honestly, I just I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure how I feel. I think it's the weather as well. Um, so we're home. We only left the house to go shopping. We had to do some grocery shopping, and then we just did like normal house stuff, laundry, dishes, stuff like that. I don't know if we're going out to get something to eat for dinner. If we're going to make something here. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Thank you so much for sticking around. Hello if you're new. Um, I'm filming in a different place. This is my bedroom. Do you like my wallpaper? I don't think I've ever filmed here, so... Yeah, but... Hi, I'll come back. Uh, let me know down below what you want to see. <laughs> like, what kind of videos you want to watch. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of this vlog. So, talk to you soon.
a horrible quality but it is like 10 p.m. and I finished The Vanishing Act by Esme Lennox I'm sorry, I'm speaking like this, it just sounds weird if I speak too loudly um, anyway, I really enjoyed the book the ending was very surprising I was not expecting it going in, in that direction I'll probably film a single book review because I think it's better there's a lot to cover and I don't want to ramble too much on this vlog but yeah, I finished this um, we're going to go to bed soon don't know if I'll read anything else today or not but we'll see I have my cat over here sleeping um, yeah, so I'll talk to you tomorrow and I'll let you know what I'm reading or if I'm going to read anything I'll just, you know, give you an update so I'll talk to you tomorrow okay, good morning <laughs> it's the next day um, it's like 11 o'clock I already had a shower not wearing any makeup so don't say anything about that <laughs> um, but yeah, so hello, good morning um, I just wanted to give you an update on what I'm reading so last night I didn't feel like reading Dracul I wasn't in the mood for it so I decided to pick up The Rainmaker by John Grisham I started this book in September or October and as you can see it's really thick this is like under 600 pages this book is actually 598 pages long <laughs> So, yeah, I read a little bit every day when I got it, like a chapter a day. Uh, but then, obviously, I already talked about that. I had to put it down for a while. And I decided to pick this one up again last night. I'm very happy with the fact that I remember everything. You know, I started reading it and I was like, oh, yeah, I remember where I left off. So that's good because uh, John Grisham... Off it. What? John Grisham is going to be a favorite author of mine, I'm sure. I read The Testament in August, I loved it, and I got this one in September when I went to our, our CT's book fair. Um, I have another one waiting for me as well, so I'm very excited about this author. Uh, this is about Rudy Baylor. He's a new lawyer, just finished university a few months ago, and at first, he thought that being a lawyer was going to solve all of his problems. Like, this is going to be easy. This is not going to be easy. My cat, is keep, my cat keeps interrupting me. Can, can we just... Can you chill? Can you? Yes? Um, so where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, Rudy thought that being a lawyer was just going to be awesome. You know, he would leave university a few months after he would take the bar and find an awesome job that would pay really well and that, you know, after that life would be easy. But he soon realizes that's not true. The real world can be very difficult. That's what I try, you know, telling my students every now and then. Um, there are good people out, out there, but you also need to be careful for the people that might make your life difficult. And... Rudy Baylor had to deal with some of those people. So right now he is working on an insurance case that he got, like he found this case when he was still a student. So this is his first real case. And basically this insurance company promised a family that they would take care of everything um, medical wise. And when their son, their adult son got sick with leukemia, uh, they said, oh no, the insurance policy doesn't cover that. Uh, that's not true. There are documents that prove other otherwise, uh, but insurance companies are very difficult to deal with. So he is in court for the first time. That's exciting. And um, it's really funny because I sort of, I can see myself in him a little bit. I can relate to his character a little bit. When I started working, when I was still very young and I started working, um, you know, I would stay up all night trying to prepare for every possible scenario. But then on the day, I would look like very professional, very composed. And that's what's happening here. So I really like that. Um, at first, I wasn't a fan of his character. Just because he, he was very entitled, you know. He was just very arrogant. 
Um, but all of his problems sort of had an effect on him and now he is very humbled. Uh, he is not expecting people to help him. He realized that he has to make it on his own. And I find that to be just amazing. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to continue reading this. I have like 200 pages left, so I'm not going to finish this today. But I would like to read like till page 400 and something. I would call that a, a success. And yeah, I keep enjoying this one because I'm loving it. Um, it's a bit slow at times. Sometimes I had to stop and read it again, like read the page again, because there uh, there's a lot of jargon, uh, lawyer jargon. And this is considered to be a legal thriller. I had no idea those existed until I started reading the Testament. So yeah, I recommend John Grisham's books if you haven't read any of his already. And right now I am going to have some breakfast. The weather is a lot nicer. It's still very cold, it's still very windy, but it's a lot nicer. It's not rainy today. I'm feeling a bit better. And yeah, we'll see what we do today. But tomorrow is Monday, so I just want to relax. I, I don't think this week is going to be very difficult, honestly. Um, but I'm not predicting like any problems, but we'll see. Um, but anyway, I just want to relax before the week starts again. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to finish this vlog today. I think I will, and this will be just a week a weekend vlog. But I might continue during the week. Not sure. I'll see. But yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Today's Monday. <laughs> I completely dropped the ball yesterday. I just, you know, my mom came over uh, to have dinner with us and then I completely forgot about wrapping it up. I just got home from work. My cat is meowing because I'm not paying attention to him. So I'm sorry about that. I just wanted to wrap up this vlog and tell you that unfortunately, even though I spent most of yesterday reading and relaxing, I, I was still not in a very good mood. I was still under the weather and I still am. I feel like I'm not, I don't feel good yet. So um, I didn't read that much, um, but yeah, I made some progress. I still have this to read, like this big chunk, um, but it's getting really interesting. <laughs> so I'm going to read uh, some more tonight, but yeah, I'm just a bit tired because I got home like five minutes ago and I just wanted to say something, you know, to close the vlog. I'm sorry this was not aesthetically pleasing. It was not like a beautiful vlog. I'm sorry about that. It's just, you know, you have to get back in the swing of things. I don't remember how to vlog anymore. I have to relearn it. I just wanted to say Thank you for watching. I really hope that... Hi. Kissy, kissy. Thank you. I really hope you enjoyed this vlog nevertheless, even though it was not like beautiful. I hope you, you'll stick around for what's coming. I would like to film another video, like a sit down video this week. Uh, maybe a tag, a fun tag, or that book discussion. 
about translated literature that I was talking about on my Instagram. But I don't know. So if you are wondering, I wrote like a very short review on the vanishing act of Esme Lennox on my Instagram. You'll have the link down below if you want to go there and follow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. Then what? You have to talk to him. <laughs> um, so, I forgot. I don't know what I was saying anymore. But yeah, uh, sorry about the vlog. Hope you'll stick around. And you know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll talk to you very, very soon.